All right, guys, we're back with more Blender exercises to help you level up and totally change the way you use Blender. All the project files are up on Patreon and Gumroad, so you can jump right in. Today's batch includes some texturing exercises, because let's be honest, if you want your renders to actually look good, you've got to get comfortable with textures. But hey, no pressure to master everything right away. Just try out these few exercises, and before you know it, you'll be well on your way to becoming a texturing god. You don't need a ton of textures to make a wall look realistic and detailed. In fact, with just one decent concrete texture and a good water damage texture, you're, you're pretty much set. Never underestimate the power of water damage. Seriously, just keep a few of those textures on your drive, and texturing will start to feel like a fun creative process rather than a chore. Since the concrete texture is tileable, we can use object coordinates for it. That way, we reserve the UVs specifically for the water damage texture. Import your water damage texture and start UV unwrapping the mesh. Make sure the streaks actually make sense directionally on the walls. It's not hard, just select all the faces that point in the same direction and unwrap them as one piece. Then in the UV editor, rotate and move the UV islands until the water streaks flow naturally, like dripping down the wall, not sideways or upside down. You'll need to repeat this for each set of wall faces until everything looks right. Sometimes you might need to disconnect a face from a UV island it's stuck to. To do that, go into face select mode in the UV editor, not island mode, select the face or faces, and hit Y to rip them from the island. Now you can move and rotate them independently. Once that's set up, use different blending modes in your shader to combine the water damage with the concrete texture, and boom, instant realism. What I really like about this trick is how flexible it is. You can swap out the water damage texture for a different one, and as long as it's the same resolution and the streak same downward flow, which, which they should because, well, gravity, you won't need to touch the UVs again. That means you can easily layer multiple water streaks to build up detail without constantly redoing your unwrap, but it gets even better. You can use the same streak concept to add things like dirt, moss, or any kind of buildup. If you want to go for multiple layers, say water damage, dirt, uh, and moss, you'll need to create separate UV maps for each layer. It's super important to name them properly so you don't get lost later. For example, if I'm adding moss, I might create a mask using a dirt texture that has buildup concentrated at the base. I'll run it through a color ramp to boost the contrast and make the mask stronger. Then I create a new UV map. Let's call it corners, because I want the dirt or moss to show mostly in corners and near the base of the mesh. Just like before, I move the UV islands around until most of the grime lines up with the bottom and edges of the model. Some people use ambient occlusion to fake this kind of detail, but it's nowhere near as rich or customizable as using actual grunge textures like this. When everything's lined up, just mix the concrete material with your dirt or moss texture, and boom, you've got something that looks grounded, detailed, and way more believable. Now, this setup isn't limited to just moss. It can be dirt, both dirt and moss, or even rust if your base material is metal. The beauty of this workflow is how reusable it is. You can save the entire setup in your asset library and anytime you need it, just swap out the textures and you're good to go. And here's the fun part, you can animate it too. Want to show dirt or rust gradually building up? Just add a math node set to add right before the color ramp that controls your mask. Keyframe the values and you'll get a smooth transition effect where the grime or moss slowly creeps in over time. Super simple, but the results look awesome. This wall still needs a bit more personality. Something like graffiti, a poster, or maybe just a Blender logo slapped on for fun. So let's add it. Just import the image you want and mix it with your existing shaders. Now normally you'd have to create another UV map to place something like this. Instead, let's keep it simple and use the position of another object to project the image directly onto the mesh. I'll use an empty for this and set up an object texture coordinate node, picking the empty as the reference. That way, the image gets projected onto the wall based on the empty's location, rotation, and scale. If your image has an alpha channel, plug that into the factor input of the mix node so only the logo or graphic shows up. Make sure to change the extension mode to clip so it doesn't repeat all over the mesh. Now let's take it further and grunge it up. Multiply a grunge texture with the alpha channel to add damage or wear to the graphic. You can use a color ramp to tweak the contrast and dial in the look. And of course, like before, drop in a math node and animate the value to fade the logo in or out over time. Great for storytelling or subtle environmental detail. 
There's actually another way to project a texture directly onto a mesh, and honestly, it's even faster and easier. Just use the shrink wrap modifier. What makes this method awesome is that instead of projecting with a bunch of nodes, you're literally moving the textured object itself. It's super intuitive, and it works across multiple objects without needing a complicated node setup. Here's how it works. Just create a plane, texture it as usual with transparency, like a PNG with an alpha channel, and then add a shrink wrap modifier to the plane. Set it to project and pick your target mesh. Boom, your texture gets wrapped right onto the surface. You're basically using the plane as a decal, and because it's geometry, you can move it around freely and even duplicate it to project the same or different textures onto other areas or objects. Way easier than building a whole node tree just to project a few images. This approach is especially handy if you're working with multiple decals or graphics and want to keep things clean and modular. Just duplicate the plane, make the material unique, and you're good to go. You'll actually see tricks like this used in several Blender add-ons. One great example is the Sanctus Material Library, which has its own projection method, same core idea, different execution. Another is Smartify, which takes these concepts and packages them into smart tools that make material placement a breeze. I've got a bunch more exercises like these in the pipeline, so if you're enjoying them, make sure to subscribe. And if you want to go even deeper, check out my courses and add-ons. Links are all in the description. See you next time.